Hello, I'm Michael from All Spirit Activism. I am content creator for Pentecostals and Charismatics for Peace and Justice since a couple of months back. And I had the privilege of interviewing Jennifer Miskov, who is a PhD, a brilliant woman of God who is writing a lot of books about revival. And she was one of the key persons in uh, organizing the Azusa Now event, which was arranged by The Call uh, in Los Angeles, and Heidi Baker was there, Bill Johnson was there. They have also um, co-written with Jennifer a book called Ignite at Azusa, uh, which was recently published and that I really can recommend. Jennifer is also um, the founder of a community house called Destiny House, uh, where a couple of women live together and they worship God and they combine charismatic spirituality uh, with uh, fellowship, community life and helping each other out. And it was really inspiring to hear her speak about how she envisions the new Jesus Movement revival uh, that will have an even greater impact than Azusa Street and that really will have this epic combination of uh, the spiritual gifts as well as peace and justice and and the social aspect of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So you can check that interview out at pcpj.org, that is Pentecost and Charismatic for Peace and Justice. I would like to spend a couple of minutes talking about the Azusa Street Revival. That's really a revival that has hit me hard as well, especially six years ago in, in 2010, God really spoke to me about Azusa Street and I started to read a lot of books. I still uh, have uh, quite a few of them. Um, this, for example, Fire on the Earth, uh, awesome book uh, that contains excerpts from the journal, the, the um, magazine that was published from Azusa Street, from the Apost Apostolic Faith Mission and the paper itself was called Apostolic Faith. Uh, really, really inspiring and here you can find a lot of testimonies of the miracles that happen on Azusa Street and we'll come back to them in a moment. Um, this book by Frank Bottleman is really a classic, another wave of revival. Frank was sort of the Luke of early Pentecostalism in that he researched and wrote down eyewitness reports and, and he really uh, had the gift of um, journalism, I guess, <laughs> of, of writing things down uh, about what, what was happening. And this is also very interesting. They told me their stories uh, by Tommy Welchel. Uh, it, it is not as good as a source, I guess, because it's sort of a, a secondary source material. Tommy is, is sharing his testimonies. Um, from when he had interviewed people who were part of Azusa Street that they told him while he was eating chocolate chip cookies and drinking milk. And uh, it contains some amazing testimonies, uh, but perhaps one should take them with a little grain of salt. It's, it's stuff like, you know, people that had their limbs uh, cut off, they were amputated, and then they got them back and, and things like that. Uh, but even in this one, which I would say historically is a better source, the testimonies are amazing, especially when it comes to the gift of tongues. Now, I, I've known about the gift of tongues in, in a Pentecostal context is primarily to speak languages that nobody can understand. And then sometimes, perhaps, um, God will let you speak a language that um, is understandable to other people. And, of course, we see this difference even in the scriptures. In On the actual Pentecost, there was this um, language miracle of people being able to speak existing languages. Uh, whereas what Paul describes in 1 Corinthians seems to be more about languages that are not understandable by anyone there, at least. And they need interpretation. He also mentions... Um, the, the tongues of angels, which I think refers to languages that literally nobody on earth can understand, but it's still inspired by the spirit and, and can be interpreted and, and used as a prayer language. Now, what I didn't know was in early Pentecostalism in Los Angeles on the Sousa Street, uh, the dominant form of uh, tongues that people expected to receive when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit 
was to speak existing earthly languages. And it, it was even to the extent that people were sent out as missionaries to the countries that spoke their language that they now had received. And, and this Fire on the Earth book, uh, which again is just excerpts from the actual magazine that the other Pentecostals themselves published, has so many testimonies of this. Even in the first issue, the, the first issue of the Apostolic Faith, September 1906, uh, contains this testimony. Uh, Mohammedan, that is a Muslim, a Sudanese by birth, a man who is an interpreter and speaks 16 languages, came into the meetings at Azusa Street, and the Lord gave him messages which none but himself can understand. He identified, interpreted, and wrote in a number of the languages. I mean, what's that? that that is crazy. That's amazing. And, and then he goes on um, to to speak about <laughs> the languages that have been identified by this ex-Muslim and, and by others as well. The gift of languages is giving with the commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord has given languages to the unlearned Greek, Latin, Hebrew, French, German, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, Zulu, and languages of Africa, Hindi, Bengali, dialects of India, Chippewa, and other languages of the Indians, Eskimo, the deaf mute language, and in fact the Holy Ghost speaks all the languages of the world through his children. Another miracle that is mentioned uh, in these early reports and that is richly developed in uh, Welchel's book uh, is the Shekinah glory. Now apparently when the Azusa Street meetings were going on, and for a period I think for uh, about three years there were continuous meetings uh, almost all the time. So when, when a meeting ended another meeting started and so it, it was this uh, continuous worship in, in the Azusa Street Barn. Now, a mist would appear and it was very similar to uh, what is described in, in the book of Exodus and Numbers and so forth. Um, this cloud that followed the Israelites appeared in Los Angeles. And the really crazy part is that according to the people that Welchel spoke with, sometimes there will be a fire instead, which is also similar to the um, story in the early Old Testament. So this fire would appear above the actual barn when they were gathering and people nearby would, would call the firefighters and when the firefighters arrived they realized that he couldn't put this fire out because it wasn't a real fire, it was this weird miraculous phenomena um, that just signified that the Lord was at work uh, in there. And many, many people witnessed this, especially the cloud um, and the mist, the fog that, that was filling um, the, the barn. And again, pe people could testify about the Shekinah glory in these early reports in uh, the Fire on the Earth book. So, overall, Azusa Street, of course, is a mind-blowing thing. Thing. and I'm, I'm so thankful that the Lord did that. It really vitalized his church, really brought a lot of it back to the roots, even though um, I, I think it was a mistake for the early Pentecostals not to go completely Pentecostals in that they most often didn't practice community of goods. Some did, for example, in China, uh, which is actually uh, something i also written about on Pentecostal Charismatic for Peace and Justice about the Chinese Pentecostal that really had the full gospel um, because they also um, apply the, the latter half of Acts 2 that talks about the sharing of possessions, not just um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues bit. But even that, um, the Azusa Street Revival was amazing and I too, like Jennifer Misko, Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson, I really believe that the Lord will do it again and it will be even greater and it will be a complete restoration of all the things that we read about in the New Testament, both the charismatic and the social, together with evangelism, because that's what Christianity has always been about. Thank you for watching and God bless you.